Squishies, back again on another vlog. This is Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Season 2, Episode 6, uh, Star Sitter and On the Job. Uh, this was a pretty fun pair of episodes. Um, Star Sitter was predictable but entertaining. Um, you know, Star and Marco babysit is an episode that kind of writes itself, because you know Star is going to do ridiculous things that create chaos, while Marco is going to try to be, you know, responsible and do the correct things according to the book to take care of the baby, but inevitably that means some chaos will emerge that Marco isn't able to handle, um, because babies are not predictable. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. Mm. I mean, I don't really know that there's a lot to say about it. I think the most interesting thing about the episode was the uh, little mini versions of Star and Marco that were playing the game. Uh, and it was interesting to start and end the episode with them. Um... Because that opens up all kinds of weird questions. Like, they appear to have... Like, they seem to be Star and Marco in personality. Um, and to have identities of their own. But... Do they, like, cease to exist when the game isn't being played and reemerge when it is? Like, what are they? Um... It's a weird, weird question. Um, but, you know, this is Starverse. It does weird things. Uh, other than that, yeah, the episode was just basically just a bunch of silliness. Um, I did enjoy the visual of cake being pumped into those little tadpole egg things. And then them just spewing it everywhere. Like somehow there's a million times as much cake that they're spewing out as was as Star put into them in the first place. But that's, you know, cartoon physics for you. Um, it was just generally a fun, silly little episode. Mm. I really was not expecting On the Job. Uh, a... Buff Frog episode was not something I saw coming. But, you know, maybe I should have. Because there's a tendency of Disney Channel cartoons to do this thing of uh, having an episode that shows a previously unseen view of a past episode. Um, the examples that come immediately to mind are, uh, uh, I'm blanking on what the episode is called, but the one with the time traveler from, uh, Gravity Falls that, uh, throws him into a bunch of past episodes and kind of explains some happenings in those episodes. Um, B story from, uh, Phineas and Ferb, which is the adventures of the Fireside Girls in, like, happening simultaneously with the A story of the episode, and it's one of my favorite jokes in the whole show, because it's a B story in the sense of when you have a cartoon that's split into two segments, when the first one is the A story and the second one is the B story. It's also a B story in the sense of it's a secondary plot involving secondary characters happening at the same time as the A story of the episode. And it's a B story in the sense that it involves a lot of Bs. Um, because it's a B-E-E -E story. Yeah. Um, I am easily amused by triple puns. Like, regular puns are okay, but when you hit me with a triple pun, I'm like, yes. Um, but this one, uh, of course, was following Buff Frog at his new job that was the reason he needed babysitting in the first place, or that he needed his kids babysat. Um, 
and it was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was fun seeing like this character trying to reconcile being evil with having kids, you know, because certainly history is full of examples um, of people who would go to work and do monstrous things and then come home to their families and be perfectly ordinary, fine parents, you know? Um, history is full of examples, the modern day is full of examples, it happens all the time. Um, because people are good at compartmentalizing. Buffrog is not so good at compartmentalizing. Um, he keeps seeing his children in the rats that he's supposed to be, you know, interrogating or capturing or whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he's got to do it because his kid's got to eat. Um, which is often how people justify doing monstrous things at their jobs and then coming home and being good parents is their kid's got to eat. You know, kids got to eat, I'm just following orders. If I didn't do it, they'd just find someone else who would, and so all the bad stuff would still happen, and my kids wouldn't eat. You know, these are how people justify these things to themselves. Um, but for Buffrog, it's a combination of that, and, like, these are his friends, or at least uh, Boofly is. He doesn't seem to know the others. Um... And he wants to be accepted by them, and he wants to impress them, and he wants to do a good job. And the fact that said job is torturing small animals, you know, um, and of course we get the, uh, I kind of suspected because the rats looked familiar, um, that the episode was going to involve Ludo in some way at some point, and so, you know, that final shot wasn't a huge surprise. Mm, but Ludo is definitely building a, an empire of sorts amongst the downtrodden. And that's one thing that's really clearly going on here, is, like, the, anim the, the monsters are starving while the humans have all the food. And it's like... A lot of the monsters do seem to be people who are, who would be decent people if they didn't have to, you know, steal food from the humans. Not all of them, but like Buff Frog. Um, Boo Fly seems to be perfectly capable of, you know, you know, he's trying to cover for his friend and all this stuff and all these recognizably human motivations. Um, you know, again, we're seeing that like, The monsters are just hungry. They just want a fair shake. And, I mean, it's already clear where this is going, which is they're going to be exploited to overthrow the Moonians and just... Are the Moonans? Yeah, Moonans. And just place Ludo in their place. You know, because that that's the thing, is that, like, for every revolution that successfully overthrows the imperial power and replaces them with a free and just society, there's a dozen that get hijacked by some jackass who just wants to be the new imperial power. Um... And it's always something that you have to, you know, be watchful for when people are revolutionizing. You know, when people are angry and not content with the powers that be, like, that's great. That's a force that can be focused to do great good, but it can also easily be hijacked and used to make things much, much worse. <coughs> Trump! Um... The funny thing is, that was actually a genuine cough. Um, I've still got that little bit of a cold. Anyway, um, not a ton to talk about with these couple of episodes. Um, 
And I feel like that seems to generally be the pattern with Starverse. Um, like, it's free-flowing and fun, but it, it doesn't always give me a ton to say. Um, but, you know, that's okay. You know, some shows are ten minutes, you know, if every show meant that I talked for a half hour about 11 minutes of show, I would never be able to get these vlogs done. So, it's nice to have a show that's a little bit simpler. And still fun, because Starverse is still a ton of fun. Um, and I look forward to where it goes and what it does. So, uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my uh, Patreon, which should be showing up directly to my right right now, uh, if you want to see more of my stuff. And I'll see you all next time. Bye!